Gully, your father was a very famous oarsman before you, wasn't he? Uh, yes, he certainly was. He won more races than anyone had ever rode to that. He'd always liked it to in the future. Mm. As a comparatively small boy, did you mess about in boats a lot? Yes, quite a bit. My father was extraordinarily sensible about it. He never tried to suggest that we should row. I went to see him row as a small boy, and I caught the bug, I suppose. That's really w what it comes to, but he never suggested it at all. Yeah. He was a very interfering man normally. <laughs> <laughs> now, you rowed at Eton, and then you went up to Oxford to Magdalen College. You rowed for your college. Mm. I believe you collected the Grand Challenge Cup at Henley Regatta in your, in your first year at Oxford. Um, yes, we had a, a crew that seemed to really fall together under the leadership of a, a man called Horsefall, mm -hmm. who had rowed for Oxford before the war. Which year was this? In 1920. This was the year of the Olympics, wasn't That's it? That's right, yes. And uh, five of us went on uh, to row in the Olympics, and we were beaten in Brussels by uh, four-fifths of a second. And I always think that uh, perhaps if they had kept it as a college crew, it might have just made up that forfeit of a second. We might have won. It had been the only time a college crew would ever, ever have won the Olympics, I think. Yes. Nevertheless, you collected a silver medal, and the following spring you were in the Oxford boat. How many of your Magdalen colleagues were with you then? Um, I think uh, there were two or three. You were in the Oxford boat for three years? Three years, yes. And in your last year you were president? That's right. How many times did you win? The 21 and 22 crews were beaten, and we just won by three quarters of the length in 1923. Now, when you came down from Oxford, you, you kept on rowing. Under whose colours? First of all, Leander, and then my last year, uh, Thames Rowing Club. How many times altogether were you in a winning grand crew at Henry? Uh, seven times. And there was one year you won the Grand and the Stewards Fours. And that was the last year I was rowing in 1928. Mm -hmm. I tried to get people to lug me over so that I could say that I'd been in a winning steward four. Everyone who'd tried had been completely unsuccessful. But on this occasion, in my last race at Henley, we got home by two foot. And before that, I believe, you had done the double of winning the Grand and the Goblets. With Lucas in 20 and 22, yes. Twice? Twice, yes. How old were you when you decided to turn in active rowing? I was 29. Was this because you think it's a strain after that age, or was it because um, of pressure of work? I think it was a strain. Um, I don't th think it was pressure of work. I used to take my holiday as rowing. I never took time out of the firm, and uh, veins started coming up on my forehead and that sort of thing, and I, I, I'd rather lost my will to win, so I thought it was time to pack it in. Mm -hmm. But you continued to give a great deal of time to rowing, as a coach, for example. I, yes. You coached Oxford. the Oxford crew on several I, occasions. Yes, in the 37, 38 and 39. And, of course, you did a, a great deal of regatta work and umpiring. And yes, that still goes on. And in latter years, as administrator, you're now chairman of the Amateur Rowing Association. That's quite right, yes. Is rowing a growing sport? It's getting much, much more popular, and it's had been increasing very much since the war. We are getting, thank goodness, a tremendous lot of help from the provinces, and they are coming down sending real good crews, and I have no doubt that they will have a tremendous salutary effect on the whole of English rowing. Good. Now, the university's boat race, what is the appeal of this race? Last Saturday, over the same stretch of the river, there were over 300 eights racing in the head of the river. A magnificent spectacle, but hardly anybody goes to see that. But this race between two crews attracts attention all over the world. Why uh, is it? I think it's really because people always prefer to see a race that is side by side, and one which looks like a procession, but which is, in fact, a time race. Yes. And, of course, there's the tradition of, of, of the boat I racing. I think there is a tremendous tradition, and because their fathers did it, their grandfathers did it, it's been going on for so long, one must see the boat race. It must be one of the toughest races in the world. Uh, I think it's extraordinarily tiring. I used to be very tired almost for a week afterwards. They'd say nowadays, because I wasn't trained well enough at all. <laughs> It's a very tricky course. Yes. Occasionally, of course, one of the crews experiments with a, a new shape of boat or a new kind of blade. Yes, there have been a lot of these um, Italian boats now. I think they're jolly good. I, I do. And I think these spade blades are another improvement. I think spade blades uh, make it much easier to row. Uh, yeah. You get a cleaner finish, I think. There are occasions when this kind of experiment can be disastrous. There's a story about you redesigning the boat in which you rode 
in the pier or event for the goblets at, at Henley, uh, <laughs> coming unstuck, or rather the boat coming unstuck. Yes, my dear old partner, Lucas, always used to sort of start shaving away bits here and filing bits here and sawing bits here. Actually, it happened he had n nothing to do with this particular accident. The stretcher gave way and went through the side of the boat and uh, green water started coming on. I'd lost my stretcher, which was rather difficult to steer Indeed. and row, and we just didn't uh, finish the course. We sank in a most spectacular fashion, now just short of the winning post. 